Travis one good so the final countdown Mormons don't fear the Reaper one of these will be the theme song in the description below comment reply video the ninth half playlist has it all but there's no more time for you to get caught up you've wasted the days of your probation <clears throat> by not studying your scriptures Mormons believe that if we ignore the warning it'll go away Mormons believe that if they're destroyed then they'll believe Totally not understood the scriptures. Whole purpose for a warning is that it's in advance and that you heed the warning. Otherwise, you are to blame. You can't go blaming other people when destruction happens and wondering why nobody told you when it was obvious somebody told you and you just didn't believe. I'm the good guy. So, Book of Mormon starts us off in the time frame setting of 16th of March, 597 BCE. So it's not 600 BCE, it's 597 BCE. If you're going to take it as literal history, you need to get your literal history correct. Bruce R. McConkey. And so, in chapter 2, or 2 Nephi chapter 1, verse 4, Lehi says he has a vision in which he sees that Jerusalem is destroyed. Ninth Av, which is Babylonian, because Babylon's the one that came in and destroyed them, and they assimilated into Babylon with the calendar. And they go by the day first, then the month, in the books of Exodus, Leviticus, and Numbers. So it's 9-11. The original 9-11 was when the Jewish temple was destroyed. Jerusalem is destroyed. <coughs> so, you'd think, okay, yeah, literal history. Except Lehi has his second vision which is an exact same pattern match for Nephi, or yeah, Joseph Smith's second vision with Nephi. Not Moroni. Gotta use the Joseph Smith papers, guys. In which he sees a star date of the 23rd of September, 2017, from Revelation chapter 12. Also Isaiah 6 and 7. Also, everywhere in the universe, all the Jewish authors are talking about this date. The start of the ministry of Lehi. In 23rd September 2017. Yeah, the Book of Mormon is prophecy and revelation, it is not literal history. Lehi as a story type and shadow of the latter day Christ. And so, because it's in the Book of Mormon, it's two Mormons, and it's your Christ, Mormons, a human being, just like Joseph Smith is. That's the learning of the Jews. That's the religion of the Jews. That's the Christ of the Jews. He got fooled by Constantine's Christianity with a non-Trinitarian twist. 
which means Brigham Young usurped Joseph's religion and changed it. If you paid attention to the Joseph Smith papers, you'd see that Brigham Young is the enemy. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the enemy. Thomas B. Marsh was deceived by the enemy to believe that Joseph Smith was in charge of all of it. Nope. It's Brigham Young and his Danites. So America, and thus the world, is getting overthrown by the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Supposed to look for patterns in linguistics. So when Joseph Smith says that <coughs> Christianity is abominable, you go into the Book of Mormon and you see the great and abominable church. And you see these anti Mormon, anti Christ, poor churches that believe in a great spirit. Christianity. So, Mormons are not supposed to be Christian. All you had to do was read your Book of Mormon. You failed. So, Joseph Smith even confirms all this with his documents. Section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants. He's speaking to Mormons. He's going to prophesy, predict the future. And so he uses Matthew 24 and says that the temple of the Salt Lake Temple Square will be thrown down brick by, well, not brick, stone by stone. It's the only stone temple. How did Joseph know? Because it's not the Jerusalem temple. There is none. It was destroyed on 9th Ave. Which is the reference. See, the authors of those Gospels knew 9th Ave. It was written after the destruction of the Jerusalem temple and the Jews, after the Jews had been scattered. And so their writing of that time period, screwing up the science on purpose, because it's a prophecy giving revelation. The end of the book of the Gospels is that Jesus fails if it's literal history, because the Jews are destroyed, the temple is destroyed. No saving of Jesus, Yahshua, Yah, Hebrew God, Shua of salvation. Jeremiah 23, verse 5. Messiah ben David Moses the third. And so, I had a uh, Daniel and his idol god dream interpretation to explain all this for you. And Jews are taken hostage by Babylon. The Jews were indeed, like the Book of Mormon tells us, pre-Babylonian captivity Egyptian. And they were taken captive into Babylon, 9th Ave. And as you go down, you see Christianity is the Roman iron mingled with clay. What happens to that, Christians? Oh yeah, it's destroyed. Crumbles. So, Christianity can't be the one true church. 
So that rock going down from Utah <coughs> is the Jewish Christ to restore the Jewish religion pre-Babylonian captivity Egyptian David Moses the third so it can't be the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints either because that's Christianity that's going to be destroyed Christianity already is destroyed but it's being used to destroy Islam both are over two billion worldwide so it's going to be a bloody battle but we got to get Christians to want to get revenge how's that going to happen hey I know let's burn America to the ground that'll get Christians going we'll see Democrats are sensitive snowflakes who aren't doing nothing for our country they knew what they needed to do when they got power under Biden and they failed and so under Biden everybody lost their rights under Biden Roe v. Wade got overturned under Biden we're all doomed under Biden MAGA is overthrowing America under Biden Islamic terrorists are also trying to coup America under Biden and so Kamala Harris is running on a campaign of MAGA has overthrown the government vote for me and I will restore your rights women I'll res make America great again but it was you and your administration under Biden that lost it for us if you couldn't save it how can we trust you to restore it so we have no choice for this election Democrats who will do nothing and will not restore our rights or MAGA which has project 2025 which is a complete wipeout of America but tonight at 6 p.m. is 9th Ave pay attention to 9 a.m. Israel that starts 9th Ave for them pay attention so project 2025 I did some math there are 219.5 million white women in America that is awesome out of 333 million point three million Americans that means with project 2025 and the mass deportation they keep threatening that we're going to have um, didn't, oh yeah white men are 41 million 184 thousand five hundred So we got to subtract that still from the number uh, 41 last minute math I'm sure nothing will go wrong with my calculations So the actual mass exodus, mass deportation that they're talking about will be 72,615,500 people. Hope you're not one of them. It also means that there's 
four women for every white man. Four white women for every one white man. Polygamy. Do Christians understand this? Do they know that that's the whole church's plot of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints? <clears throat> to be put in slavery, women. So, yeah, tonight, or later this afternoon, I'll do my video. Uh, it looks like I get to retire. Whether they fail or whether they succeed, I still get to retire. Hopefully, I, I, the church falls, regardless of anything else, just as long as the church falls. That's all I ask. Because it is the enemy. It's prophesied to fall. I will not be left alone until it falls. They've purposely tried to murder me all these years. I was a federal officer. They kidnapped me. I was held hostage for six years of my life, tortured, trying to murder me. Despite that, I miraculously got freed in 2014. I have sacrificed my life to give you this warning. And you refused and rejected it. So, final hours. If it doesn't happen, great. Church is true automatically by default, right, Mormons? Scriptures are back to being literal history. Remove all the science. Remove the plot from the way to perfection. <clears throat> just go back to normal. Everything is well in Zion. Alright, so. Child Faith. He's got a couple of questions, or several questions, and two comments. He says, I've been trying to keep up with your latest videos. Dang, so juicy. <laughs> Should I put the peach on the screen? But it's a lot of info as usual. By the way, I wanted to ask you about Aminadi from Alma 10. Can you tell me its meaning briefly? Plug in section 103, verses 16 and 17. That is the, the interpretation key of all scripture. I gave it to you guys yesterday. I think that was the video I gave it to you, wasn't it? And so, you have your Mormon, who is the Christ figure. Like I said, that's Lehi in chapter 1, in verse one or chapter 1 of 1 Nephi. And you just go through. Where Mosiah is the Christ figure, it's Mosiah. Hey, that's Moses Yah, the Christ. Amazing. And so, yeah, you take it into the Bible. Noah, he's the Christ figure. Abraham is the Christ figure. Isaac, Christ figure. Jacob, Christ figure. Joseph, Christ figure. Moses, Christ figure. Joshua, Christ figure. Samson, Christ figure. Elijah, Christ figure. Jesus, Christ figure. That's all you gotta do. So find out who is the good guy in the story. He's the Christ figure. Bad guy, Russell Marion Nelson. He's the head of the great and abominable church, guys. Hello. Russell Marion, his baby name meaning Lucifer. Just like the Book of Mormon warned you. They know the names, they know the dates, they know the places, they know the events. You're supposed to have those as you study your scriptures, not just church history. Put everything in order, look for patterns. You'll see an Exodus pattern. No doubt. Uh,
with, uh, says he came across the name with M and D combination and its roles in ancestry. Not sure what M and D is. Mormon New Doctrine. I'm old. I don't know this texting language. I mean, yeah, I caught on to Juicy. It has something to do with peaches. <laughs> but it literally took me years to figure out what LOL meant. Let alone LMAO. Alright, so Elma, chapter 10. Now these are the words which Amulek preached unto the people who were in the land of Ammonihah, saying, I am Amalek, Amulek, which is without a king. I am the son of Giddona, who was the son of Ishmael name of Yah is Sun God, who was a descendant of Amenadi. And so would be Joseph Smith. Amulek would be the prince without a kingdom, without a king. And it was the same Amenadi who interpreted the writings which was upon the wall of the temple. So it was written by the finger of God. Joe Sampson helped me figure out that uh, the uh, linear script was not the, well, it is the linear script, but I, I couldn't find it. And he helped me with uh, Samak which is the throne symbol, thus Isis. Deciphered Paleo-Hebrew, in case you're new. I, me, not him, me. He's using Jewish Kabbalah. He's the one that found out that Joseph Smith Sr. rewrote the 116 pages, didn't realize that he thinks he's being faith promoting for Mormons. Just like John Welsh and all other apologists, they think they're being faith promoting for Mormons and yet they reveal that, oopsie, not literal history. Written by Sidney Rigdon and rewritten by Joseph Smith Sr. Kind of need to know that. Otherwise, you're going to get deceived and th start thinking that there's going to be cows in the soil of America somewhere. You just keep digging it up. Of course, everybody has the one true map. And so they should know where the cows are located then. Why aren't we digging that place up to find those cows? Because there aren't any cows. Your map is wrong. It's a prophecy. It's about cows right now. Do we have cows? Yes, we do. Are they from Europe? Yes, they are. Ta-da! Amazing. How did Joseph Smith Sr. and no, because it was him in 116 pages. Minadai was a descendant of Nephi. And so, yeah. And I don't have my, it's, it, well, it's not even in there because it was destroyed by my dad. So it's somewhere in the files. Crap. I devalued uh, uh, Brown Driver and Briggs's Hebrew English lexicon so that I could run the tests to decipher Paleo Hebrew and uh, and created a devalued dictionary and uh, that I would 
be able to reference. I have associative memory I don't memorize, so I require reference books, which is why math can be a tricky thing for me, because that's left-brained. Associative memory is right-brained. But uh, nonetheless, I would be able to go in, look it up, and go, oh, yep, there it is. There's the meaning. So that would help you in this particular case. But as a descendant of Nephi, yeah, he's also the one, because Amulek is a descendant of Nephi also. Let's see how many we have. We have Gidgadonai, Ishmael, Aminadai. So three, so it's four. We need one more. And they say descendants, but they don't put anybody in between. So five generations. So yeah, it would be Amulek to answer your question. But he's talking about Amenadi, who would be Joseph Smith. And Nephi would be the Messiah Ben Joseph of Egypt. And so uh, senior would be uh, Nephi in this particular case, I would assume. But then you also have son of Lehi. And so Joseph Smith would be. But if you try to fix only one interpretation to it, you're going to get screwed up. And so don't try to force it like I'm doing. And it's not working, so I have to dismiss it who came out of the land of Jerusalem, who was a descendant of Manasseh. And so, sticking to the pattern, Amenadi would be, you would be correct. Because he comes out of Jerusalem, out of the Exodus, on 9th Ave. <coughs> and he is a descendant of Joseph Smith Sr. Nephi, in this particular case, would be Hiram rather than Joseph Smith. I was the son of Joseph who was sold into Egypt through Manasseh. Ta-da. And so, yeah, you, you're catching on. But, what was your question? Well, you wanted to just know the meaning of this briefly. The wall of the temple. Holiness to the Lord. That's the only thing on the wall of the temple that's writing. Which, that was the name of the parchment of Joseph Smith Sr. from Jewish Kabbalah, not witchcraft. I mean, seriously, the Jewish God, Yah, who is the Christ, and Christians are calling it witchcraft. And you wonder why they're abominable? So yeah, during that time period, there were lots of Salem witch trials. Even uh, Joseph Smith's family was a part of a witch trial. One of the fathers, the patriarchs, testified at a Salem witch trial to hang a couple of women. Most likely one of them caught him cheating on his wife, and so he claimed that he was possessed by a witch, and so the witches were put on trial. That's the sad reality. When you allow Christianity to dominate your life, you gotta cover up your sins by blaming other people, calling them witches. And so that's pretty much it for a minute die. And then he goes on to talk about this is where he says that I uh, he had blessed my house, blessed me and my women and my children 
says that that was evil. And polygamous wives. Six times polygamy is condemned. That was number six. It was brought to my attention by a person who commented. I miss the woman who was commenting about how uh, the solar eclipses marked the spot for Zion. And she was catching on. She was studying. I was impressed, and now she's gone. Disappeared in 2020. Never heard from her again. I, I miss people who catch on to things. I just don't comment ever again. I have to assume they're dead. Anyway, uh, 27 minutes in, Child Faith also wants to ask about Ether 3. Doesn't it talk about the veil, the finger of God, the true order of prayer? No, because that's Brigham Young's edition, mixing Freemasonry in the temple. Not Joseph Smith, Brigham Young. Mormons don't want to acknowledge this because it means that Brigham Young is the bad guy and that it wasn't Joseph Smith. And so everything that happened to Joseph in 1838 that he was accused of is exactly what this Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints of Brigham Young's branch off says, yeah, yep, yep, Joseph Smith was the leader of the Danites. Joseph Smith ordered death to anybody who was apostate. Practice polygamy. Let's find the list. I haven't put it away. I'll announce my retirement this later this afternoon. Hopefully. There's all the cycle on. There it is. Joseph Smith's 1838 transformation began priestcraft. Section 119, 1838. And so he's a sexual deviant. He's a murderer. He's a terrorist and a seditious conspirator. He turned Christian. Turned the Book of Mormon Christian. He now worships Jesus instead of he being the Jewish Christ, Messiah Ben Joseph. He's now a criminal. He worships the inverted pentagram of Lucifer as a Christian. He changed succession, and so his 1835, section 107, eh, you don't need that anymore. Joseph Smith changed it. The president of the 12 now automatically becomes the president with all the keys given to him instantly, automatically, upon Joseph's death. So Brigham Young is the one true legitimate successor with the keys of Peter, James, and John, and not Moses. How'd that get screwed up again? Right, 1838. He's the Danite leader. And don't worry, his family and Sidney Rigg didn't approve of it. He now only has titles of prophet, seer, revelator, and translator. Brigham Young said translator is revelator. Revelator is astrology of witchcraft, not astronomy of science. But we don't talk about that anymore. We just say it's a rock and a hat, gift and power of God. <laughs> and so there is no power of prophecy and revelation, no predicting of the future, no revealing of the date of the predictions of the future. The Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints deny the power of revelation and prophecy. They will not do it. Uh, they deny religious freedom. You have to join the church or die. You have to pay up. It's a criminal organization. Hmm. Yeah, um, that would be part of section 119, priestcraft in a, a criminal mob. Organization. Yeah, I added that at the final hours. 
and then all his visionary accounts of 1838 are now literal histories. He actually saw Jesus. I'm surprised Willard Richards didn't put Jesus in there. He changed everything else. <clears throat> put Jesus in the name of the church in verse 1 so that nobody will know that Willard Richards is part of that evil disposed and designing persons militating against Joseph. Nobody will know. <sighs> or that it's Nephi instead of Mor or Moroni instead of Nephi. And, and uh, and so Mormon apologists thinking that, okay, Willard Richards is correct. It's now literal history, and so it can't be gold plates. Because that's 200 pounds. So let's change them to golden, and that'll work. That'll be about 50 pounds. Dumbasses all says gold for a reason. Remember Joseph Smith Sr., Jewish Kabbalah, and Knights Templar of the York Rite Freemasonry. He saved America. That's how we got the Book of Mormon. And how do you thank him? You dismiss him, huh? And so, no, Brigham Young had nothing to do with or Joseph Smith's temple. It was just Washington anointings. The veil concept comes from the Egyptian judgment scene. I sent you the link. That's what that was. One minute video of mine. Only 35 views, I think. <laughs> or was it the 300 one? There some others that took God. Uh, all these years and Mormons just don't care. Church has to be true, and we're going to ignore truth to prove that the church is true. And if you call us wicked, we'll prove it. And so, yeah, you got to remove all of the endowment ceremony. All of that was added by Brigham Young. And so, you got to go back to the beginning. The temple has to be restored, remember? Set in order, section 85, verse 7. Aminadi sets the house of God in order. So, no, none of that. You're too young to remember the death penalty, do you? No. No. Sacred, secret are the same word and so mystery is assumed to be a secret no it comes from sacred same meaning that which is within the temple it's not unknown except to select few people but yeah only those who go through the temple would know the information this is where the confusion in the language came in so mystery, when Joseph Smith talks about the mysteries of God, he's talking about the temple and rituals of the, the whole thing. And so you start off with baptism, which involves the sacrament. That's the death of Osiris, Joseph Smith, Jr., who shed his life for Mormons. And so Mormons gather at church to partake of the broken body that fell out the window and the blood spilled of Joseph Smith as we internally take it. <laughs> it's all literal. <laughs> Just like the Catholics. Transmogify. Oh, no, not, that's Calvin and Hobbes. Uh, transubstantiation, isn't it? Is that what it's called? Or is that the Mormon thing to explain... Uh, the uh, selections from the Book of Moses. Oh, God. Guys, dumbass, you're just making it worse. You're digging a bigger pit for the church. 
Stop it. Well, keep going. Keep digging. You're doing great, guys. Faithful emotion. <laughs> keep it up. Expose the church some more. Good job. <clears throat> and so, yeah, mystery is an initiate. If you're going through the mysteries of God, you are an initiate in the temple. That's from the Greek word mysterion, which is where sacred, sacred came from. <coughs> so notice how they're all the same. Sacred, sacred, the T and D are phonetically the same, the same word. Uh, and so, yeah, after the baptism with the sacrament, which is the Last Supper, that's for the genealogical line for the Latter-day Christ, Amenadi, through Hiram. And, uh, and so then you go through the washing to become a high priest and a high priestess, because it's man and woman, seed, egg, baby. That's why the sacrament is for both. Women gets pregnant, has babies. That's why you take it internally. It comes from the Egyptian story of the battle between Horus and Set to restore the kingdom of his murdered father. And uh, uh, then uh, you, that's uh, Zadok in Hebrew. And then you go to the anointing of oil to become a king and a queen. Melech. Melech Zadok. Melchizedek. Melchizedek priesthood. And thus take upon yourself the name of Christ. Amen. Melchizedek. To avoid the too frequent repetition of the name of God. Section 107, verses 2 to 4, is it? <coughs> we use the name Melchizedek, because he was a great king and high priest. They leave out king. He's Pharaoh. The king of kings, lord of lords, the great high priest, Pharaoh, son of Amun of the Amun priesthood of the David Moses dynasty, 18th of Egypt. And, uh, and so that's the religion that's being restored with the Daniel dream. And, uh, and so that's it. And then you're presented at the scales of judgment, which is the original Ten Commandments. It's 42 affirmations. I have not done this, I have not done that, I have not done this. There is no Sabbath day, because that was created by the Babylonians. Every day was a Sabbath day for the Egyptians. No superstition whatsoever with the number seven. That was Babylonians. <coughs> and so, yeah, people who would go to the temple would bring food and drink offerings. It would be taken by the priests, blessed there at the altar before the Holy of Holies with the God statue, and uh, women would be performing musical hymns, and there would be prayers offered, and thus the food and drink are blessed. And then a portion of that was given to the people who came to worship at the temple, thus the sacrament origins and then uh, uh, after passing the judgment your heart must be lighter than a feather which seems impossible so everybody gets devoured by Amet Amenet no not Amenet that's the wife of Amen Amet something like that the multiple beast in one hybrid and uh, if you pass your name is written in the book of life by Adam who was Thoth David 
phonetically the same. And then you are taken by Horus to the veil of his father. And I, you, that's where you repeat the affirmations. I have not done this. I have not done that. My heart is pure. I passed my judgment. Can I come in? Yeah. You are now all Cyrus. Father becomes the son. Son becomes the father. That's all that is. There is no Freemasonry stuff at the veil. That was Brigham Young. Joseph Smith did not establish that in 1842. Everybody lies. Who told you that? Oh, Hebrew C. Kimball told you that? From his journal? Really? Who is Hebrew C. Kimball again? Who does he follow? Who is he a leader? He's the actual number one. He's the one that got Brigham Young to join. So yeah, you gotta pay attention to these Mormons. They think they're clever tricking us when they are the enemy. And so yeah, it's the Danites, Brigham Young and Hebrew C. Kimball, who said that Joseph said that I could do this for the temple. No. You have the keys of Peter, James, and John. You do not have any other keys. You are not authorized. Don't try to fool us. Joseph Smith told us not to listen to you. And how well did Mormons do? They didn't. Um, and so, yeah, sort of with the brother of Jude. You know, the veil. He lived a perfect life. And thus is presented at the Egyptian veil. Thus sees, because he's in, able to enter into his presence and see him. And so he has faith no more. Now he knows. So, um, but yeah, the mysteries of God is your temple clue in the Book of Mormon. Yeah, I made a, v a brief video for you, linked it to you, about what Joseph's true temple should have been based on the Book of Mormon. That would be epic! So, yeah, that's it. We're done. Now I gotta go running for the last time. your judgment, Mormons. Now you will be judged. You can't judge me, God! <laughs> Read the rest of the chapter.